Hey guys, um, so here is a proof that uh, is involving corresponding angles. And so here, um, it's not going to be necessarily like the previous one where we're building an equation, but you're going to see a very sim similar feel to it. So again, just like the last one, we're not going to be proving triangles are congruent. Um, in fact, we're going to be building a kind of another pseudo equation. We're going to have to show 1 and 4 are congruent. Now again, acknowledging that 1 and 4 are alternate interior angles, what this implies is that we cannot use alternate interior angles in our proof. Again, this is like saying to find the word house, the one word you can't use is house. So if we want to prove angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent, okay, if we want to prove these are congruent, the one thing we cannot use um, is alternate interior angles. We've got to prove it was called indirectly. Now, we are given one given, um, so that we have these lines are going to be parallel. Um, so marking those uh, a little bit thicker, so maybe it'll help us see some angle values or angle relationships. Okay, we have line M and we have line N. Um, again, your mind should be shifting immediately to the fact that if we have parallel lines, we absolutely 100% have angles somewhere, congruency of angles somewhere. Um, and so if we can't use 1 and 4, it looks like we're going to have to bring in 2. And so I, with 2, I can see a couple different relationships. Um, first of all, if I take this like, line K to be the transversal, okay, it's this guy right here, the purple line, okay, I can see right away that angle 1 and angle 2 should have a relationship. Again, if you, if you can't see that in the diagram, we draw it out here. So there's my two lines. Here's my transversal. And the angles in question are located here and here. That's 1 and that's 2. Well, if you notice, they're on the same side of the transversal. One's inside the lines, one's outside the lines. So they're not interior, exterior, anything like that. But they're both in the upper right-hand part of their quadrants, um, of their clusters. And so if they're in the, both the same relative location, one, I know they're congruent, but also I know they're congruent. Like I know angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. I know this is true because of corresponding angles. Okay. Um, since these lines are parallel, I know 1 and 2 have to be congruent by corresponding angles. But there's another relationship right here on the tail end of it. Um, if we look at 4 and 2, okay, so if you notice 2 and 4 are located at the same intersection, um, so we have a situation kind of like this where we have two lines crossing and we have angles located here. Those are those scissor angles, and I know angle 4 is congruent to angle 2, and this is because of vertical angles. Okay. Now, our goal was to show 1 and 4 are congruent, but look at what we have so far. Um, we have angle 1 is congruent to angle, angle 2 right here. So we have angle 1 is congruent to angle 2. But then using their vertical angles, we also know angle 2 is congruent to angle 4. Wait a minute. If 1 is congruent to 2 and angle 2 is congruent to angle 4, uh, it should stand to reason that angle 1 and angle 4 are congruent. Um, we can leap right to the very end. Now, if you think really hard about what that was called, um, this is 100% the transitive property. Man, my handwriting is terrible tonight. So let's try that again. Transitive property. Okay, and so if you check your notes from the beginning of last class, like that big warm-up we did, you should have notes not only on the transitive property, but also substitution. But either way, I think that's going to be our pathway. And so to review, um, the first thing we noticed is that our lines are parallel, so that's the first thing we have to notice. Um, then we use the fact that we, if we have parallel lines, we have corresponding angles. And then we also brought in the fact that these are vertical angles and therefore congruent, 4 and 2. And then we can use a transit property um, to link those things together. So it seems we can have a four-step process. And lo and behold, if we look at our statement of intent, it identifies just that. So to prove angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, I will first use a lot, the fact that the lines are going to be parallel. Um, corresponding angles for angle 1 and angle 2, and then the transit property, oh, it looks like I forgot vertical angles. Hmm. Let's write that in. Um, and the transit property using vertical angles. Because okay. it's not named in our statement of intent, then we don't intend to use it in our proof, but we definitely have to use um, vertical angles as well.
right? Um, so again, I don't think I'm going to use a, a flow proof here. I think I'm going to go back to the two column. You could write this, honestly, in a nice two, a flow proof as well. So if that's your thing, by all means, go for it. Um, I think this is a good opportunity to practice our statements and justifications for our two column proof. And so that's going to be our statements. That's going to be our justifications. Um, so let's just go ahead and get to it. We have a nice pathway here. Um, so the very first thing we should do is our initialize our givens. And so we're given that line n, line m, excuse me, is parallel to line ooh, n. And that's okay. That's, a, um, that's because there's a they're given. Excuse me. Um, and so we can start um, making our steps known. And so first we have a parallel, the parallel lines with corresponding angles. And so we can establish angle 1 is certainly congruent to angle 2. Um, the reason for that is corresponding angles. Okay. And corresponding angles make sense because in the previous step we said the lines are parallel. Um, we can then now call our vertical angle set. Um, angle 2 is congruent to angle 4 um, by the vertical angle theorem. Okay. And then finally, we can set up our transitive link. And so that was our final thing right here. We're going to name the transitive property. Um, and so we can say... Ooh, that's out of alignment. Oh, there we go. Okay. Um, since we have angle 1 congruent to angle 2 and angle 2 congruent to angle 4, we can make the statement that angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, um, and that's going to be because of the transit property. Okay, um, and so we can stop here. We're done because if you look at the final statement in our proof, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4, that is precisely what we were being asked to prove up here, angle 1 is congruent to angle 4. So we've shown it. It has a justification. Our proof is finished. Okay, so kind of a short one, um, but again, one that I would definitely store in my memory bank as one that you'll see again, or at least the thinking involved in this one, you will definitely see again. All right, so that's this one. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next proof.